So by now you have the basic idea of how pretty much any limit of a function is going to work. Okay. There's maybe just a couple special examples which you maybe have never seen. and So let's just quickly talk about that. What if, what if I give you something like this? The limit is x goes to 8 of 10. Is that, what, kind of, what kind of a limit is that? Well, you know what? This is an easy kind. There's no x in here, but this is called the limit of a constant. Okay, 10 is a constant. And if I imagine putting 8 inside here, wherever I see x here, I'm going to put it to be 8. Well, there is no x's, so the answer is just going to turn out to be 10. Okay? So if you ever have the limit of just a number, if you want to write it fancy, we could say the limit is x goes to a of a constant. is just a constant. Okay? So this is of type 1. This is an easy kind. All right? So don't, don't get confused with those ever. What about something like this? The limit as x goes to maybe 4 of x minus 4 over x plus 4. Well, what we should always do is we should always put the 4 inside or put this number inside and see what we have. When we put 4 in here, we get 4 minus 4 is 0 over 8. So we have 0 over not 0. Okay. Which, which category do you think that fits into? Well, you know what? This is an easy kind. Okay. Because remember, if the bottom is not 0 and the top is 0, that's just fine. That, that means we can just, this is not even a separate category. I shouldn't even write that down, right? Because this is the kind that we can just put in. This is type 1. So let's do it. 4 minus 4 over 4 plus 4. This is uh, 0 over 8. There's nothing wrong with writing 0 on the top because 0 divided by 8 is 0. So the answer for this limit is 0. Okay? Um, what's another example that sometimes gets tricky? Let's say something like this. The limit is x goes to 0 from the left of root x. What do you think about that? Well, the uh, remember root x? You can only take the root of a number that's greater than or equal to 0, right? What does the graph of root x look like? The graph of root x looks like this, right? It starts off at 0, 0, and it grows slowly like that. Notice that the domain of this function is only numbers that are greater than or equal to 0. We write that like that, right? So the domain is only numbers that are greater than or equal to 0. But when I write this kind of notation, x going to 0 from the left, that means x is a small negative number. Can I take the root of a small negative number? No, I can't. I can't take the root of any negative number. So this, this limit uh, doesn't even make sense, okay? This is, this is definitely not defined. Oh, that looks terrible. Let me just erase that. So this limit here is not defined, okay? But if I were to ask the other direction, like the limit is x goes to 0 from the right-hand side, well, that one's okay. That means that this is actually the type 1 limit. Because I can just put 0 right in there. That's fine. The root of 0 is 0. In other words, if I take a small positive x, and I put that in there, when I take the root of it, I get a small positive number. So this answer is going to be 0. And so if somebody asks you a two-sided limit like that, limit as x goes to 0 of root x, this is, uh, this is not defined either, right? Why is this not defined? Well, if you ever want to know if a two-sided limit is defined or not, what you should do is figure out the left and right-hand side limits. If those two answers are different, which they are here, right, then for sure the two-sided limit is not defined. In order for the two-sided limit to, be, to exist, the left and right limits have to be the same. And that's not the case here, is it? Okay. Now, uh, so I wanted to mention that. Now let's talk about another example with absolute value. Sometimes absolute value causes some confusion. You probably know what absolute value is, right? Like the absolute value of 5 is 5. The absolute value of minus 5, though, is 5. So you kind of just get rid of the negative sign. 
if it's there. The absolute value of zero is zero. Stuff like that, okay? If you want to write that a little bit more formally, what you would say is that, say it like this, okay? The absolute value of x, what is it equal to? Well, the absolute value of x is x if x is greater than or equal to zero. And it's minus x if x is less than zero. A lot of people get confused with this bottom statement. They say, well, how can you have the absolute value of x being equal to negative x? I thought you said the absolute value always has to turn out to be positive. Well, this is only true when x is negative, right? Let's say we take x to be negative 5. Look at what I'm saying. I'm saying the absolute value of negative 5 is minus of minus 5. And that's true, right? Because minus of minus 5 is positive 5. So you need to think about that a little bit, that, that bottom one, that the absolute value of x is minus x if x is negative, okay? So here, just to end this video, let's look at these, these uh, questions. The limit is x goes to 0 from the right of x over the absolute value of x. And this is supposed to be a 0. And the limit is x goes to 0 from the left of x over absolute value of x and then the two-sided limit okay well for this first one what we should say to ourselves is what kind of number is x in this one by the way notice this is of type 0 over 0 right okay so if we take a number that's a small positive number then the absolute value of x, since x is positive in this situation, the absolute value of x is just x. Okay, so we get the limit is x goes to 0 from the right of x over x. But that's just 1, isn't it? So we get the limit is x goes to 0 from the right of 1. And that is 1. So the answer for this first one is 1. It's a little bit cramped there, but I hope you can read it. Notice I'm still keeping the limit sign until the very end. So there's my answer, positive 1 for this first one. How about the answer for this one? Notice uh, here x is a small negative number. It's to the left of 0, so it's negative. And if for any negative number, the absolute value of x is minus x. So here we have the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of x over minus x. And x over minus x, if you simplify that, that's just negative 1, isn't it? So here we have the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of negative 1. And what is that answer? Negative 1. So here the answers are different, eh? The left limit is negative 1, but the right limit is positive 1. And since the left and right limits are different values, this limit here does not exist. Okay, so same kind of thing if you have something like this, the limit is x goes to maybe 3 from the right of absolute value of x minus 3 over x minus 3, and limit is x goes to 3 from the left of x minus 3 in absolute value over x minus 3. How would those go? Well, notice on the first one, if x is to the right of 3, maybe 3.01, then when you subtract 3, you get a positive number. It's a small positive number, but it's still positive. And you know for an absolute value of a positive, those, those absolute values, they just disappear, right? So this becomes x minus 3 over x minus 3. And that is just 1, isn't it? And so the answer is 1 here. And on this one here, this one... Uh, this is a, if x is going to, on the left hand side now, this is minus of x minus 3, isn't it? And when you cancel those guys now, you get negative 1 left over. And so that answer is negative 1. You see, if x is like 2.99, maybe, 2.99 minus 3 is negative, right? And the absolute value of a negative, what do we do? We put a negative in front of it with no more absolute values. And so we see we get different answers there.